Page 54, Rondo a Capriccio, Opus 129, also known as Rage Over a Lost Penny. You can find recordings of this all over, just look for Rage Over a Lost Penny, and it'll be there. 2 4 time, 1 sharp, 1 to key G major. Right hand first, slowly. Watch this fingering. 3 1. Keep in mind this is a very fast piece, Allegro Vivace. It's important to use different fingers on these repeated notes. And then the set 16. Going on. Follow their fingering, it's fine. And then page 55 in the second line here. I prefer two. You gotta come down anyway. This way I'm in position for the for, for the thumb. I'm only moving one time. And then, and then that's it. And at the end, the last line. Left hand is just the block chords. Keep them soft. Last line on page 54 here. D sharp, F sharp, B. First line on page 55. The last measure, A, it's a G, A, F, C sharp. And then here. Don't forget the F sharp, so it's decent. Put the hands together. Rest. It's doable, sort of. Well, this is the thing that I struggle with a lot when I'm learning a new piece of music. This is where we have to be flexible. You'll think you've got something worked out and it's working okay, and then when you start to take it up to speed, it falls apart. It doesn't work anymore. This is one of those pieces that can do that. For instance, if I take this a little closer to where it goes, I mean, come on. I, that's hard for me to do. There's people who can do that, can can move them with those fingers like that, but I'm not one of them. So the fingering I've been using works fine at the slow speed, it falls apart at the fast speed. So now I gotta go back and rethink this. Okay, that fingering isn't gonna work, what do I do? Well, there's other finger I can do here. I can do that more easily than that. Or I can do, I can do five, three. I think probably four, three is going to work okay. So let's try that. That works better. And so I got to keep in mind as I go through this is the fingering I, I chose at a slow speed going to work at the fast speed? I don't know. Let's find out. Then you, uh, going on. Now here. Third line down. Then I, I need second finger on that second A. Here. So that's another fingering change I gotta make. Then going on. That's okay. Now they're telling me fourth finger. And third finger. That's kind of weird. I mean, I've been doing it, but third, third. To me, if I'm going to use a black key, it's easier to use fifth finger than fourth finger. I mean, white keys seem to work okay, but a black key, it's a little uncomfortable. So I might change that to a three, five. Here, for that one, 
So I've had to make some fingering changes because of the tempo. I do that a lot. So you got to keep that in mind. If it were a slow piece, it'd be one, one thing, but a fast piece is another. I sped that up because I wanted to talk about fingering. Because I knew the fingering I was using at the slow speed wasn't going to work at the fast speed, but I wanted to give you a good example of when I'm learning a new piece of music, how some of the things I got to go through to figure this out. I got to change stuff like fingering because of the speed when I get it going faster. I have to test the fingering out at a quick speed, maybe just one hand at a time, you know, to get it. To see if it'll work. If not, I got to find another fingering or something as I'm learning it. We don't want to change fingering anymore and we have to because when you change fingering on a piece it's almost like relearning the piece. So get your fingering down as quickly as you can and and keep it. Don't be changing it around unless you just absolutely have to. Articulation, staccato. It's a real short staccato. Whether you use finger staccato or wrist staccato, I don't care, but keep in mind it's soft. Connect this and staccato. And this is all connected. Good. I, in the last line on page 54 the here, I tend to play both of those B's staccato. Remember this is fast, it's and the same thing at top of page 55, second measure, I play both of those B's staccato. Yeah. Yeah. That's sort of the articulation. Dynamic starts out soft, that's the right hand. Keep the left hand what out of the way. You got a medium loud, then the third line down, last measure. Go up to loud. Then soft. Then again. And stay loud. Now we're loud. You have a crescendo starting with the first measure of page 55. And it goes all the way through the first line into the second line to the second measure where you're loud. There's not a lot of difference between medium loud and loud. We want to crescendo all of that. So we don't want to be loud until the second measure of the second line. Well, how do we do that? Well, we cheat. Because otherwise you're not going to hardly crescendo at all. So, we're just starting out medium loud. Actually, I would come down and start this out just under medium loud. Just... And then the next one, it would be more like a medium loud, the last measure, starting there, more like a medium loud. And now we're loud. So I'm, I'm like taking two measures to change any dynamic at all. Now we're loud. I guess that's the rage part. I'm raging over a penny or something. Like that. No pedal in this. Mm -hmm. And your Allegro Vivace is going to be different than mine or anybody else's. Control and evenness is more important than speed. So it's 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 up to you. If that is your Allegro Vivace, go with it. As you get more experienced at piano and better at piano, it, it may increase some. I don't know. It's a personal thing. But don't go beyond what you can control. Take the hardest part in here, like at the top of page 55, the last measure. However fast you can play that, that's your speed. Or these measures, it has to be even. Don't, don't. Uh-uh. Every note's got to be there evenly. That's where practicing the scales comes in handy because when you practice the scales even as slow with the accents, it actually helps you to play quicker when you need it. So, that's a neat piece. You'll find all kinds of recordings of this on if you want to hear what it sounds like.